Eurostep podcast, uh, Eurostep, 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 on the fast break. Gentlemen, gentlewomen, this is the Eurostep podcast. It's your boy and Goods, aka Ratchet Man. Yeah, I'm Ratchet Man today. And uh, we got a we got a killer on the line today. We got a killer on the line. We got a man that's that's put up a lot of points in the last few years, and uh, he's been killing guys in the in the in season, in the off season, any kind of season you got, man. So please give a nice Euro step welcome for my man Eric McCullum. E, what up, boy? What's up, man? Appreciate you for having me. Man, I appreciate you uh, being on, man, and taking the time, man, out there giving them guys buckets this season, man. <laughs> Just trying to get these wins, man. It's hard out here. <laughs> man, I, I, I'm already knowing. I'm already knowing. How, how's everything going out in Turkey? How you enjoying it? It's like a second home to you now, right? Yeah, this is um actually, I played two years, well, like a year and a half at Galatasaray. Um, right. And then this is my first year at Ephesus. So, you know, I'm very familiar with the culture, um, with the people. I can get around. I actually chose to live in the same building that I lived in when I played at God mm-hmm. Tassar. So for me, everything is the same. Um, it's just a beautiful place and um, definitely my second home outside of um, Cannes, Ohio. Yeah, nah, it's uh, it's so important, man, being overseas and being comfortable, man. I feel you on that. Like, being in the same building and, and knowing what to expect, man, that's like half the battle. You spend more time at home than anywhere else anyway, you know? Yeah, like, I try to try to keep everything as simple as possible off the court. I think um, if you get your routine, you get your schedule. Um, you have, you know, your stores you go to, maybe your restaurants you eat at, and all you got to do is focus on basketball, and it makes it makes life a bit easier. Yeah, man. What what about that traffic though? Man, ever get <laughs> old? <laughs> oh, the traffic is terrible. The traffic is so bad that I learned to ride the train. Um, mm. I learned what time not to drive, when to drive, and you know, you just got to be cognizant of it. the work hours. Um, when people are going to work, when people are getting off to work, uh, a ten minute trip that normally takes ten minutes might take. 50 minutes right you know, you know. <laughs> right nah I'm, I've, I've heard stories man i've heard stories out there man but what up what about the season man i see you guys uh you guys are off to a a good start in the uh in the turkish league let's deal with the turkish league first man uh you guys you guys got a lot of new faces this year which is uh which is i guess is kind of different especially dealing with like the euro league teams you know they usually have less turnover but uh yeah how you guys feeling with the domestic league over there i think um we got a good team um it's a lot of new play, new faces, um, so that means we got not only have to get used to each other, um, everybody's style of play, uh, what are guys' tendencies, but we also have to learn um, coaching system. Um, I think we're starting to do that. We're starting to improve. We picked it up. Um, we're playing a lot better basketball defensively, offensively, and it's tough because usually when you're on the big clubs, they always keep the same core, um, mm-hmm. and it's an advantage. Like you come in preseason, everybody knows the offense, everybody knows what to expect from people, and when you get a new team, it's kind of like everyone's kind of figuring out carving out roles nothing is understood so i think uh, once we you know start to know what each person's job is you know what we're supposed to bring to the team i think that's when we started to play at a higher level and we have um had some success and i hope we can build on it right with the uh now in Euroleague, you guys had a, like y'all had a bad start but uh you know it seems like now like y'all starting to y'all starting to get y'all rhythm you feel like y'all a little more comfortable now you guys kind of got a feel for each other and able to gel yeah, uh, put us in a hole. Um, we got down zero uh, and five, uh, and now we we managed to stumble out to three and seven. Um, you know, won uh, some big games on the road. I think um, for us, uh, it was some key injuries we had. Um, we were missing um, Derek Brown, who's a very important player for us mm-hmm. uh, for the entire first ten games of the year. Lead. Uh, this is a guy who was a projected starter at the four position, who has many years of year lead experience at a high level NBA experience. So that changed some things for us. Um, we also had um, injuries to other key players. Um, guys, a guy actually that we signed to replace um, Derek in injury, he got hurt. Justin Dolman, high level four. Um, I think, and also we had like you know some personal issues on our team as far as like one of our players lost his father, mm-hmm. so he missed you know two games. He had to go home for the funeral. Get it together there. And it's just it's been an up and down season. Like a lot of people probably don't know, but like we've had a lot of injuries. Uh, with the personal issues like that and we've been battling through and you know I always say um, sometimes adversity you know it can make a team stronger it can help it come together so I'm hoping that we respond guys are starting to get back healthy um, the team is starting to return to like a sense of normalcy we have a routine we, we're starting to to play better and we're starting to be you know one so I hope we can continue to go and build on that and also 
the first team games, we also had a very tough schedule to start. You know, we played Real Madrid, Cheska, Fenerbahce. Right. So, you know, it's not, not an easy start when you're, when you're going down with some players who are hurt and who can't play. Right. Yeah, this, uh, it's definitely there's – no, there's no nights off in EuroLeague, obviously. And even moving forward, you guys got Red Star on the road, man. It's a, it's a big week in, in EuroLeague for y'all. Yeah, it seems like we play better on the road than at home. I know this is strange. Right, right. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we finally got our first home win. But we're going to have our hands full versus Red Star. They're a very strong team. Uh, they, they play hard. The Serbians are very good basketball players, and, and they feed off their fans. So I think it's important that – we establish a rhythm early, and we need to kind of control the game from the beginning, or else you know their fans could give them energy and keep them in the game. Yeah, yeah, the fans it's like an army, boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an army in that gym, boy. <laughs> I, I played um, there once um, when I was I, I was in Greece. I played for Panionis, and we had a Euro Cup game uh, against Red Star. And man, it, it's a great atmosphere. I mean, if you if you love to play road games, this is this is going to be one of the top ones at your list, just because. It's just something about playing in a gym when everybody's against you. And that rivalry, I mean, obviously the rivalry in Serbia has, you know, so much uh, history and, you know, story behind it. But also in Turkey, you know, they have different rivalries. What was, which rivalry game was the craziest for you to to play in, either when you were at Galatasaray or, you know, here at Ephesus when you guys played Fenerbahce? Which, uh, which rivalry game was like the craziest as far as like the atmosphere? Oh, for sure. Um, Galatasaray versus um, Fenerbahce. Um, it's intense. I mean. Like, when you go out and and they know that you play that team, you go to a restaurant to eat, you go to dinner. Like, the Gala fans were very passionate about this game. And <laughs> the Finner fans the same way. Uh, you know, if they saw me out, I'm sure they didn't like me too much. You know, they might have, a, you know, a couple words to say. But, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> like, at the game, you almost fear for the safety of the other team. Uh, <laughs> it was a white team, right? <laughs> yeah, you fear for the safety. Like, um, it's a great atmosphere. There might be some things thrown on the court. The referees have a tough job in those games. Um, you have to patrol the team. Um, both teams are anxious. Um, they're, they're high in intensity. It's very physical. Um, there's like controlled fireworks in the stands, um, flare guns, um, throwing coins, lighters. You just, you never know what can happen. Um, you're thankful that you have the little protection under the bench when you're mm-hmm. on the away game or or if you're that team. But like it was just something I never experienced. Huh? The adrenaline rush is crazy. It's you have to see it to believe it. Um, for people probably in, back in the U.S. who don't know, just just go to YouTube and just type in God Tassar Rivers Fenerbahce, and you can look at basketball or um, football, or as we call it, soccer. Right. And you can see the um, uh, unreal, unreal environment. Yeah, those fans, they uh, they ready for war. It's almost I almost equate it to like you know the gang culture back home. It's like you're born into it. You know what I'm saying? It's like you know, it's like yo, you blood a crip. Like yo, my uncle's a crip, my daddy's a crip. Like I'm cripping. Like you know what I mean? It's like you know you're born into it. You know whether you're on the Galatasaray side or you know Ephes or you know Fenerbahce. It's like it's a it's a lineage. You know what I mean? My grandfather was a fan, so I'm a fan. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's 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 crazy because like. Even coming in as an American and you're not really familiar with the culture if you haven't played in a place for a while, um, you start to take on that identity of the people and the team. And if you have a rivalry and they don't like that team and you come here, you don't like them either. And it's just it just it's just known and established and it, it, it makes it exciting. It makes that game, you know, even more valuable and important. And that's when that's when I think big players step up in those type of games and those type of situations and you can make a name for your team and for yourself. Yeah, speaking of making a name for yourself, man, you've been uh you've been making waves for a while, man, filling up the uh filling up the stat sheets, man. I wanna I wanna take it back though. We gotta talk about this eighty two point game, man. <laughs> now, obviously it's been well documented. I mean, it was all over the internet, Twitter, everybody was talking about like you had uh eighty two points now. Anytime somebody scores like something crazy like that, you know, I went and I, I went and broke it down. Like, you know, each quarter, like you said, I think you had 22 in the first, 13 in the, in the second, 17 in the third, and then it was like 30 in the fourth. And it's like, all right, the first question I ask is like, going into that game, let's say in the first quarter, you know, you, you, hit, a, you hit a few shots early. Do you just did you just knew it was gonna be like all right? This is gonna be a, a hell of a night. Obviously, you probably not think you're gonna score eighty, <laughs> but did you know it was gonna be all right? They in trouble tonight. Like um, my um, big man had got hurt, so in China there's a, a two import rule, which means you can have two players basically uh, from any country outside of China. There's like limitations to how many times they can play, what quarters they can play together. So at this time, the two imports can only play 
um, two quarters together. But he got injured um, the game before. And so I knew I was the only import. And so this is a rare time that we would actually get to play the entire game because normally I have to split my minutes. Mm. And and so he, he jokingly, he was like, um, you're going to have to be aggressive today. I, I need a good 50 or 60 from you. And I had a laugh, like, man, I don't know. Like, I'll be the only import. I always get double teamed and trapped. Now it's going to be even worse because you're not out there to kind of, you know, keep them honest. And uh, he was like, nah, nah, you got it. You got it and you'll kill it. I was like, ah, we'll see, man, we'll see. And um, the game started. And I'm a guy I can score in bunches. I hit my first few shots. I got my rhythm. And I was like, okay, I feel good. And then, you know, I'm, the shots kept falling, falling. And I'm like, okay, we got a chance to, I can make some shots. I can, you know, try to keep the game close, see what's going to happen. And then it just, it just spiraled. Like every shot I took, it just, the crowd started anticipating. And they kept going and going and going. And from there, I looked up in the first quarter and it's like, oh, you, you got a nice rhythm going. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but was it like at, at some point, did you, did you look at, did you know when you had like 50 or 60 or 70? Did you know? Yeah. My, uh, my Chinese teammates, they were like, they were tapping me like, oh, you're going to score, you're going to score 50. And I, I, and then I would get to 50 and they're like, oh, oh, you're going to score 60. And then like, like the crowd, but you could hear him like saying number. I don't really speak Chinese, but like with every basket, you could hear him saying the points. And then they had a, there's a scoreboard that kept the score. And like I, my teammates, they, like in China, when a foreigner gets going, um, they're very good at finding ways to get you the ball and playing through you and setting screens. And they just kept giving me the ball in good situations. My big men were screening excellent. And, you know, they sacrificed because I had it going. And, and it was just, it's just a beauty to see like when you get, in your bag and you get real comfortable right. and get in your zone and everybody just starts to play for you and luckily I was just able to hit shots and I mean it was just a special night I, I don't know I always joke I don't know if I'll ever be able to do that again but you know something that when I get older I'm going to look back on YouTube or I'll show my kids or my grandkids and I'm going to be like yeah I, I did it look look uh, you don't believe me <laughs> I, 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 when you got older you got to tell them it was 92 <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got to put gotta dubs on it. it <laughs> <laughs> no, that's funny, man. One thing, one thing I know is watching the tape, man. Is like, and, and I can tell, I can tell from talking to you, man. You, you a real humble dude, man. And it's, it's, it's great to see. But it's like, at the end of the game, you were so cool. Like, it wasn't like, it wasn't like you scored 80 points. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, yo, was 82 not enough? Like, well, what do you want? This kid won a 90? Like, I was like, yo, what's going on? I mean, I would have, I might have took my shirt off. And like, I don't know. I don't know what I would have done. But, uh, I mean, I can tell you laid back, though. Yeah, I always try to be, probably be in control of my emotions. I always try to be laid back, reserved. Um, sometimes you'll see me, like, scream or yell or get animated. But it doesn't happen a lot. So, when I do it, usually it's like, Maybe the team needs some energy or maybe, um, you know, we need that little boost. But I don't know. I've always been pretty relaxed and just chill is just how I've been. And if um, I don't I don't know, it's it's funny because like the way I play, when you score a lot, it's, you get a lot of attention. And sometimes you get credit, good or bad credit. It depends um, if you're making shots or not. So um, I kind of I don't like a lot of attention. Like, you know, I understand like if I score a lot, it's, a lot of it is because my big man say good screen. Um the guards were getting me the ball in the right spots. Uh, you know, the coaches trusted me, kept me in the game. So, you know, I try to keep it more on the team stuff. And when people see scores, they don't, they think we just like to score. But I define myself on winning. Um, it's when I made my most money, my best contracts after winning, uh, winning championships. Word. Um, it's, what, it's what I do every summer um, in the TBT. You know, I sacrifice so that we can win. Uh, we have lots of good players, lots of scores. Like, it's what we do. Um, and obviously, like, I played in China, so I can score, you know, easily in bunches and I can score a lot but you know sometimes you come to Europe you know some games maybe I don't score as much or maybe I don't take as many shots sometimes and you know it's for the benefit of the team or sometimes they need me to be aggressive and they need me to score so you know I think um I just try to be even kill not to get too high when things are great or too low when things go bad because you know as you know playing in Europe it's going to be a lot of up and downs and one minute they can love you and then, you know, maybe two weeks later, you know, they can hate you. <laughs> right, right, for sure. For sure. It's very hot and cold. You know, one thing I wanted to ask you, though, is like, what do you think that you do? What do you think do you do that to score so consistently that maybe like other basketball players don't? I, I work them. Uh, I'm a guy. I didn't have no um, 
you know, Division One full ride scholarships, only walk ons, all D two offers full rides. Uh, I'm, I'm not very big, um, six two. I was a late bloomer. I, I grew very. I was five five as a freshman. Uh, I was four eleven in eighth grade. You know, I'm I'm thin, I'm slender, whatever you want to call it. You know, I'm a good athlete, but not like not no Russell Westbrook, not great athlete like that. Mm-hmm. Just a decent athlete, and I just outwork people. Um, I come in on off days, it's just repetitions. Um, I work on every type of shot. Some shots um, I have, I don't even use in the game, but you never know when you might need it. Right. Um, and so, like, I work on it. And left hand, right hand finishes, pull up, step backs, going left, going right. Like, everything I want to work on, I want to counter. I have a counter to it just in case to take it away. And I just do it over and over again. Sometimes it could be boring, but I just go to the gym and I might work on the same move hundreds of times. And then go to the next one hundreds of times. And then every day it might be a different room, different move. But I think that's the biggest thing. Like I'm the guy who I come off a game, I can score 40 points and we might have a day off. And uh, if you come to the gym in the morning, nine, 10 o'clock, I'm going to be on there on the gun in the weight room. Or I'm that guy who I had a bad game and I might, maybe I go, I don't know, two for 10 shooting and I score like eight points and the team lose. And you know, you'll see me there still. 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, and that's what I learned no matter what. When you play good, you play bad. Um, if you prepare, I can handle failure. I can handle success. You know, I can't handle shooting bad or not playing good, and I didn't prepare myself. So I think that's just what separates me, just that mentality of no matter how good I get or how much success I have, I'm still going to be in the gym. I'm still going to work because I remember when, when no one knew my name, and I remember when I was just, you know, a guy struggling to get any job or any attention. Mm. I also got to ask too. Now I know, I know you're humble. Now let's 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 put the let's put the humble Eric to the side for a second. <laughs> you know, I want to know like, okay, when you're in the game and you're killing, like, okay, you're starting the game, you're killing, whatever it is. What is your ego saying to you on the court? Like, is it is he is he can is he in like a like a murderous mode? Like, what is your ego saying to you? Like, once you once you're starting <laughs> to get going, or once you step on the court. It's crazy because like if people meet me and they talk to me like like I'm I'm down there maybe it's an Ohio thing like I'll talk to anybody um, like it doesn't matter like, you could be on the street like any kid anybody want to pitch or anything like it's, I got it all day like it's no problem like I'm this is how I am but when I step on the court it's kind of like like a, a alter ego you know kind of like you go from Clark Clint to Superman you know that's how I feel sometimes like I get on the court and. Uh, you know, maybe it seems like I'm a little arrogant, but this is just on the court. I um, I come out and I feel like no one can guard me. I feel like I'm unguardable, and I feel like if you don't double team me, it's a disrespect. And so um, I try to punish him. And then that's how if I go into a game and there's there's double teams, and I know you know they respect me. But if they if I don't see this, uh, it sometimes make me angry. It make me think that they think one person can stop me. Nah, I could I could definitely see it, man, because it's uh. Like you said, you score in bunches, and it's almost like you know when when you hit one, it's like okay, but then once he hits that second one in a row, it's like all right, somebody's in some trouble now. <laughs> somebody, somebody in for a long night because you never know; it could be thirty, could be forty, could be eighty. You know what I mean? <laughs> you yeah, know? I don't know. I've always been like that. Like if um, like I always believe that when I shoot, the next shot's gonna go in. So it's been it could be good for you, it could be bad because if you're having a bad night. You just so confident you believe it's going in, like right. it's going to change. But like, usually if you work hard, and, and usually you're going to be on the other end of it where you make a few, the basket just expands. And but once I hit a couple, I just I get real comfortable, and then I take I take big risks. Uh, but only when I'm hot, like you know, that's when you might see one leg shots or you might see deep threes. But I try to like get in my flow, get in my rhythm, and then once I get in my flow rhythm, I think I'm hard to guard because I'm very aggressive. And I'm not afraid to take any shot. That's super dope, man. But let's uh let's keep it moving forward, man. Let's let's step off the court for a second. You know what? What are you doing your free time? You a music head? I, I went through your Twitter, man. I see you. You know you quoting some lyrics. Some uh, I peeped the Eric Bellinger joint. You an R&B uh, thug? I'm a I'm an R&B thug. I love it. Like I listen to uh, all kind of R&B before rap. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So what kind of music are you into? This is my favorite. Uh, I love R&B. Uh, hey, I'm probably gonna get some jokes for this, but. You know, I love the R&B. Then I like hip hop, of course. But rap is like, okay, I'll listen to it before the games to get motivated. But um, I like Eric Bellinger. Eric Bellinger got um that Drive By. He got a really good album. That Drive By, so tough. Oof. Of course, of course. 
man, I, I really appreciate it. And then if I go to the rap side, you know, I like J. Cole. Um, mm-hmm. I like his, I like what he speak about. Uh, you know, it's like he, um, he, he from the streets, so he understand it, you know, but he not afraid to be who he is. You know, he educated, uh, and he going to be himself and he going to talk about his life, what he been through. He not going to pretend to be something he's not. And that's why I respect that because it, it reminds me of myself, you know, you'd be from the hood, but you know, you educated, you found a way out. Right. And, um, I like, um, I like Drake. Um, uh, I like Chris Brown a lot too. He dropped out something nice too. It's so long, but, but time know. out, time out, time out. My, my thing with Chris is I downloaded, I still ain't listened to it. Cause I'm like, like who does he really think he is? If somebody wants to sit, sit and listen to you for forty five songs, like who who really yeah, wants to like, listen to you for forty five songs? I can't do it. So like, but I'll hear a few songs on like like Apple Music or stuff, and right. you know when I'm playing on my um like R and B station or something. But it's just it's too long, and I'm like I don't have the time. Like, <laughs> gotcha. I really want Fire Stick. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. So and so like music is big though. It's just like I I, I love the old school too. So like. I think how, old, just, how old are we talking though? I like I like the eighties. I okay. like the nineties. Like I'll throw it back. Um, I like Mary J. Blige. Yeah. Uh, I like like I like um the OJs. They're from Ohio. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously old school Michael Jackson. Um, what else? Like I'll put it back. Um, R and B just be all like nineties music, and I will just be reminiscing the good old days when music was music. <laughs> hey, I hear you. I, I've been on that lately, man. Like I was. Yesterday I was playing like Stevie and Otis Redding and uh, Johnny Johnny Gill was this morning. Ooh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, the new edition. I'll oh be- man! Yeah. And it's like music was like it just had a whole nother feel. Like you know what I mean? Yeah, it was. That's all I do. I blast it in the house on the speakers. I might be cooking or watching watching TV, and it's just music can just change your whole day. All right, for sure, for sure. Uh, so you be on uh, you be on the games or what else you be on on your free time? Yeah, I don't really play video games. Uh, I just um, I like Fire Stick, so I I watch lots of movies, lots of TV shows. Um, pretty much, I'm a TV head. Okay. That's like all day. Like I'm watching every TV show, every episode. It's like like my fiance jokes. She's like she's like that's the worst thing I could have did and the best thing I could have did buy you the Fire Stick. She said it's good because you never want to do anything. You just want to come home and watch your show so I don't have to worry about you but right. it's bad because you just want to sit in the house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's just like every TV show I'm watching. Um, I like um, some of the Marvel stuff, some of the DC. Um, I love How to Get Away with Murder. I like Arrow, Gotham. I watch everything like that you can imagine from action to uh, crime stuff, mystery. It's just it's just um especially overseas that uh, you have so much downtime, it just helps, you know, speed up the season, it allows me to rest properly, you know, beat off my legs and you know, not having to, you know, do extra stuff. Nah, that's exactly that's exactly why I started podcasting and everything else, man. I just got tired of my time. And that's the thing, is like well people don't understand when you're overseas you got so much time, these these T V shows almost become like an addiction. Like you will waste, like you will binge watch everything. Like, oh, it's only eight seasons. I'm on it. <laughs> I'm only eight seasons back. Oh, I can catch up. <laughs> you know, like, it's it's all like, it's got to the point where I I could get so in tune to a TV show that like when after I get my practice in and after I get my shots up and my little individual work, I'm thinking like, oh, I can't wait to get home to watch this show. Like, like it's like the highlight of my day. Right, right. <laughs> Nah, that's for sure, man. That's for sure. These uh, it, it's crazy. It's always interesting to hear what guys do to uh, you know, to fill up their time, man. Because you know, my mom used to say, "I don't mind could be the devil's workshop, man." So it's like you know, it's, and sometimes, man, overseas can get lonely, especially if you dolo. You know what I mean? You don't know nobody. You don't speak the language. Like you gotta have something to occupy yeah. your mind. You know what I mean? Oh, a hundred percent sure. And that's why it's so nice. Like if your family, your friends can come out and visit you, it like it just rejuvenates you, give you life. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, so. it, it definitely helped you hit the reset button, man. But, uh, you know, one thing I want to address, too, is the uh, you have a brother in the NBA over in there and uh, over in Portland, CJ McCullum. He's a monster over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's uh, I think I think he's a he's a very, very underrated defender. I don't know why he's not more in the in the two way player conversations with, you know, Kawhi and these type of guys. You know what I'm saying? He's yeah. uh, he does everything to me. Um, yeah, I mean, he, he's special. Um, he, he really works hard on his game. Um, 
He's got quick hands, good feet, gets there. But it's the problem sometimes when you're such a really good scorer, um, you get that stigma of, uh, oh, since he scores, he doesn't play defense that much, or maybe he's not that good defensively. And this is this is the basketball way. Like, if you score, they automatically think, okay, we can't, you know, pinpoint his offensive game as a weakness, but he has to have a weakness. This is this is how they view it. Every player has a weakness, so oh, it has to be defense. And I think that's probably why he gets a little bit underrated on the defensive end because he's so special offensively. You know what I think it is, though? I think it's because, like, when you look at guys like, let's say, like a Clay or a Kawhi, right? Like, they're taller. So, obviously, they're going to block more shots, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. and things of that nature. Whereas, you know, somebody smaller like CJ, like, he's still forcing guys into tough shots. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, maybe he's not running somebody down and pinning it on the glass or anything like that, but he's still forcing guys into tough shots. And I feel like a lot of times with a lot of defenders, whether it be Europe, you know, all levels of basketball, I feel like sometimes if you can force a guy in a tough shot, that's just as that's just as good as blocking the shot to me sometimes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. Like um if you don't if you're not making the highlight plays, but you're solid, you're cutting off the angles, you're right. beating your man by you know, those things go unnoticed uh, by the casual casual fan. But for people who know the game like yourself, like you can you can see that he's using the angles well, he's using his body and he's making the right play, even if it's not a spectacular block off the glass or something. Right. Now what how do you guys like push each other? Let's say like in the off season stuff, you guys work out together a lot, or you know, it just depends on the schedule. How does that? How does that dynamic yeah. work out? Yeah, my brother is my best friend. Uh, we've been we've been probably in separate roles since we were like since we were at the age like at the beginning when we were younger. You know, um, it kind of was forced on me. Like you know, your younger brother he has to do everything you do, or you can't go. And so it was to that point when I were younger, like ah, oh, he's too young, he can't play yet, he wasn't good enough, and then. Um, I embraced it. Uh, you know, he became my best friend, you know, somebody I could depend on. And to this day, we've worked out always. Um, we're in the gym together, you know, whether it be I might, he might come to Ken and he might have some of the, the uh, Portland coach or some of the staff meet him and um, you know, they'll put us through like a weight program. I'll be with him uh, or I'll do some school work stuff or he'll come visit me. You, we always work out. My dad is still in the gym with us. Like we do the same routine. Uh, my dad's in the gym getting our rebounds, pushing us. And he's in New York a lot too, because that's where his girlfriend lives. So mm-hmm. New York is like forty five minute flight for me. So I'll go up there, and um, you know we'll get up some work in. But like we're always working on different shots, different skill sets, film stuff. Um, he has your lead pass, so he watches all the games. Turkish lead and your lead. Um, I have NBA lead pass, so I watch all the games. And when the time conflicts with the schedule, luckily it's on demand, so we can go watch it later. And you know we're shooting each other in Texas. You know during the game, like I'm shooting him in Texas. Like, oh. Um, attack the big off the ball screen. Uh, he's telling me, drag out the screen, drag out the pick and roll off the trap. Like, just little stuff. Like, we're helping each other. We're watching each other's film. And we're just taking it to another level. Not just on the court, but, you know, um, the conditional-wise, physical-wise, and then the mental-wise as far as studying and synergy and everything like that. So, you know, we're instrumental to each other for sure. And I'm the older brother. You know, I help get him where he at. But, you know, by me pushing him, he was just instrumental in me getting to where I'm at. Uh, that's amazing. I mean, for for both of you guys, I mean, I think like uh, I, I don't I don't think anybody really is gonna have a room to argue with me on this. I mean, I think when when both of y'all hang it up, y'all are gonna be some of the best, most talented scoring basketball brothers in the history of the game worldwide. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if you <laughs> if you really like sit back and look at it, like the amount of points y'all put up in like the last three years, like you know what I mean. It's, <laughs> It's probably going to be crazy by the time y'all both finish, man. So yeah. that's uh, super dope. You got somebody that good. To, you know, you guys are both that good to push each other, you know? Yeah, it's, it's iron shopping iron. Like, you know, we've been blessed. Huh? God gave us a lot of ability to score the basket. Um, I I don't know where it came from. I guess we just, you know, some of it um, we inherited. Some of it was just a gift from God. And then some of it was hard work. But, you know, it's, it's nice to have somebody at a high level like that. Like, when you're tired, you don't want to get in the gym on a day and you got somebody like come on come on we remember when we started or when he's tired and i'm like uh-uh, let's go you lost to the warriors uh last two years we got changes we got changes and it's just it keeps you intact it keeps you glued and locked in because you know you know in the summertime it could get you know real repetitive or real boring and you're wanting the game action everybody wants the reward of the game sometimes you got to go through that preparation process first and to get that success you want in the game that's real special 
Now I want to I want to I want to kind of switch switch up the flow a little bit. We're going to we're going to move to a game I like to call heat check. It's something I do. I need to know where the heat's at. I'm going to ask you a question where the best of the best is. And you just got to tell me the country from all the countries you play for, you know, the travel like, you know, we're going to start off with best fans and you know, you just let me know the country. And we'll just move through Ooh. questions like that, all right? Okay. Oh, that's tough. Okay. All right. yeah. <laughs> so, best basketball fans. Do I name a team or just the country? The country. Just the country. Okay. Turkey. All right. The best style of play? China. Okay. Best nightlife? Israel. All right. I ain't trying to get you in, in trouble with your fiance, but best looking women? <laughs> Spain. Okay. Uh, best food? Israel. All right. And if you had one country you had to live in, can't go back to the States, you're stuck there for the rest of your life, where would it be? Greece. Okay. All right. Now we're going to switch it up a little bit. Now I need to let you got to let me know if it's going to be you or CJ. Now I'm going to ask these series of questions. All right. <laughs> okay. You or CJ. All right. All right. One of y'all got to sing at a wedding. Who's it going to be? CJ. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what about singing a national anthem? It could be a different style now. Oh, me. He'll probably mess up the words. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. If one of y'all had to battle Chris Brown in a dance off, who's, who, who, who you nominating? <laughs> we both going to try, but CJ thinks he's a good dancer, so he, he's going to do it for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who would be the more entertaining Uber driver? Me. Why is that? I'm I'm more outgoing. I joke a little bit more. He he's he's more reserved than me. Uh, I'm I'm the outgoing talking to brother. Oh, uh, so CJ just gonna ask if you like the music. You want a peppermint, and that's it. I'm huh? just gonna yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be real short. <laughs> <laughs> Unless he knows you're comfortable, he he don't really he not gonna open up right away. Okay. And if either one of y'all were in charge of cooking for the family barbecue in the summer, who who's taking that over? Who who be oh, better, better man? That's me all day. Like this is one of my hobbies. Uh they call me Chef Boy R. E. Like mm. I do it. Like if you check the snaps, you know some I'm one of the best in the business at the cooking game who's not professional, the best amateur. <laughs> okay. okay. Those, those are some strong words, but I always feel like, you know, the, the Midwest, like Ohio's a Midwest, right? That's considered mm -hmm. Midwest, right? You know, I feel like the Midwest, they, they got a little flavor of all the states, you know. I feel like the food always good in the Midwest, kind of like from the South, you know what I'm saying? And uh, you know, it's interesting you say that because you know, I feel, I feel like they probably do got some good barbecue in the Midwest. Yeah, in another life, I'd go to culinary school and try to be a chef if I wasn't a hooper. <laughs> oh, man. All right, all right. That sounds good, man. Well, that, well, that wraps that up. That was that was dope, man. So you got any plans for the offseason? What, what you got going? Uh, TBT again? Y'all going gonna, gonna to steal, <laughs> steal some more money? Uh, we thinking about it. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'll be 30 in January, so I'm debating if I'm a player or not. We'll see, but if we do, we got to defend this crown. You know, we won three in a row, so go for the four, Pete, if I do play. But um, other than that, I'll just train, uh, spend some time with my family, my fiance, obviously my parents, my brother, and just be with him and, you know, just enjoy that time because we're going a lot, you know, nine, ten months, and that summertime is, is precious. So for me, I'll just be with them and just enjoying life with them and traveling, some vacations, and hopefully I have some hardware to, to hang up in the man cave on. Um, come June. Right. Now, going back to the TBT thing, like, I remember, I remember the first year that y'all did it because I, I know Kyle Fogg from, you know, from back, from, from the crib. And uh, I remember when he was playing, you know, he just like, man, it'll be super dope if we can win this money. Like, you know, and <laughs> nobody's really even thinking like, okay, you really gonna win. And then they won it and I was just happy for him. And then y'all won it again. <laughs> and then y'all won it again. And I'm like, yo, this is crazy. But one thing I do love about TBT, though, is like, and this is where you don't really get this anywhere else, is like, it's a, it's almost like an all-star game, but you're really, like, competing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, the NBA all-star game, them guys ain't trying to get hurt. You know what I mean? They, they party in the whole weekend or whatever it is. But, like, TBT, like, 
you guys are really out there. And, you know, y'all took down, you know, my my hometown guys, Sean Marshall and them. Um, <laughs> they had a good team. Yeah. Good team. Yeah, that was, that was a hell of a game, man. But uh, it's just so dope to see so much, so many talented players, you know, overseas, you know, all on one team, all competing. Nobody's, you know, worried about the Euro basket stats. Like, it's just like, yo, let's just get this win, man. And yeah, that's one thing I love about it. Yeah, it's special for me is like, because the competition level is so high. I mean, you got some of the best players in Europe, some um, guys who are maybe fresh out the NBA a year off, and it's just such high-level play. Um, it's almost like that's like another part of my basketball family, those guys. Um, when you win something with somebody, it takes your friendship to another level because you go through the ups and downs. And, mm-hmm. You know, it's just so enjoyable. Like, I just got a great group of guys, and I really like the comrade. You know, um, even if we didn't win, you know, it would be a, a great experience. But the fact that we won, it just kind of caps it off and you know, put some pressure on us. You know, I kind of kind of want to go out on top, you know, yeah. being just winning. I won three in a row. I don't know. Like, I just I don't want to jeopardize the win streak, you know. <laughs> hey, I know. It. Hey, because then you can, uh, you know, you can share that, you know, with your kids down the line, man. I scored 92 points. I won the TBT eight years in a row. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, just, it's just one more lie you can tell down the road. That's one thing I'm waiting on. <laughs> I get yeah, on. Like, yo, they, made, they, made, they made me quit the TBT because they said we was winning too much. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like, I ain't never lost. <laughs> you know. But, man, I appreciate you taking the time to do this, man. This is uh, it's been a dope interview man i really uh, appreciate, appreciate it man I, I, I got one i got one more thing though one request one, yeah. one request man is is next time is cj's contract year tell him he got to come hoop in a euro league game or something man you know what i'm saying <laughs> you know, you know it's con- crazy. He, he jokes about it a lot but he's kind of serious he says that when he retires from the nba he wants to play one year in Europe. Oh, he, he wants to play with me, but I said, man, I'm three three years older than you. I'm not trying to play till I'm 40. Like, <laughs> hey, man, he could, he could do it. Like, you know, next contract year, you probably still be playing, man. Just, you know, sign a one-game contract, you know, come home with the oh, bro. That would, like. be, that would be dope. I always dreamed of us playing together one day. I don't know, you know, how real it would be or if it could ha- happen, but that would be great just to play on the same team one day, you know. You know, he played a two, I played a one, but he can play both. You know, yeah. boy, stuff. I, he he take away some of my minutes, but it's okay. I sacrifice for him. Man, you know the coach, <laughs> coach going to figure out a way to make that work. Any coach would. <laughs> Any coach would, man. But, nah, I appreciate you taking the time, man. And, uh, you know, if you got anything you want to plug before we get out of here? Uh, nah, man, just for the fans out there, keep rooting for FS. Uh, We're going to turn it around. Uh, just keep believing. Shout out to Canton, Ohio, of course. It's the city that made me. Canton, Ohio, man. I, I got I got one Ohio story for you. This is the this is one of two times I've been to Ohio. It was my first time in Ohio. I was in Columbus, and I remember I was with the uh, I was going to church's chicken, and I was telling this chick she was Caucasian. I was telling her I was like, look, sometimes when you go to the church's chicken in the hoods, they always run out of something. You know, oh yeah, every time, <laughs> man. Every we, time, or you gotta wait like ten minutes, fifteen minutes for the chicken. Like, right, <laughs> bro. We pulled up. We pulled up. The lady was like, "Hi, welcome to Church's Chicken. I'm sorry, but we're out of chicken." Yeah. Oh, that's happened to me before too. Yo, <laughs> I said, "What? How y'all out of chicken? Like, y'all might want to cut the lights off. <laughs> y'all might want to cut the lights off, shut it down, man. What is what's going?" Chicken and the biscuits. You uh, never know which, what they're going to have. Uh, you better not run out of them biscuits. Y'all be out of the chicken. Y'all better not run out of them biscuits, though. <laughs> nah, but that was, that was one of my Ohio memories, man. But uh, nah, that's uh, that's super dope, man. But uh, for the listeners, thank you for paying attention to uh, to to this interview. We we ask that y'all like, subscribe, you know, stay in, uh, stay in contact with us, man. Let us know what you think. And uh, stay tuned for what we got next. And we out. Girl steps. Girl steps. Girl stepping on the fast break. Girl steps. Girl steps. Girl steps. Girl steps. Girl steps. Girl steps.